So welcome to my drawing class. Um, this is going to be somewhat of a beginning drawing class and I've got some other lessons that I can give you if you would like to have something a step behind this. Uh, but we're going to be working with animal pictures this time around and I'm going to be showing you various techniques of how to approach them so that you can get somewhat realistic in your animal drawings. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, I always have this question question from my uh, students and uh, now is a good time to uh, to discuss it and that is that in the materials list I asked you to get a selection of pencils in different hardnesses and um, I never use an H for my drawing those are really good for drafting or where you need really fine lines but for everything we're doing we want a little bit fatter line and so an HB an HB is the hardest pencil that I ask you to get. So uh, they're, they come in various different um, brands. This one here is a Stedler. This is a Blick Studio. A, another one that's a Toynson Dior. Um, it doesn't really matter what brand you get as long as you get one that is um, made to use for drawing. So. Uh, an HB, let me just show you. So if I press relatively hard, uh, an HB is going to leave um, marks in the paper, but that's as dark as it can get. And now a B, let's just see if it's any different or if it actually comes out almost the same as that HB. You know, everybody's brand is a little bit different. Now I also have a um, a pencil that's just, you know, one of those ones that you get in the uh, uh, office supply store. And this one, yeah, it's going to come out very similar to the HB. They don't always say what they are, but they, they're called number two pencils and they're usually about an HB. So now let's show you what happens as we get, so as the numbers get bigger, so this was an, uh, this was an HB, this is a B. And then uh, H equals hard, B equals soft. And the bigger the number of the B, the softer the pencils will be. And so uh, let's see here, a 3B, so that was a B, here's a 3B. So I'm pressing about the same hardness on this. So I hope you can see that that's a little bit darker there. And then let's go up to a 6B. Not a huge amount of difference here, but there is a difference. And then an 8B is my darkest, and it's as close to black as I'm going to be able to get. So that's an HB. So now you can really see there is a difference between the, um, and this is probably an H would be my guess, uh, an H, HB, B, and then as the numbers get bigger, up into softer. Now there are also some other types of pencils out there. There are ones that are 100% um, graphite with a coating on them to hold them together. These allow you to draw, to make a larger space uh, on the page than what you can get with a regular pencil. And let's see, where was that 8B? This is my 8B pencil. So this is the size of the line that I'm drawing with the HB pencil. So that's about as big as I can get. And then there is another one that is also the compressed uh, carbon. And it's in a stick. It does not have the um, coating on the outside of it. So you can use the side of this stick as well as the end to draw with. This is a 2B, uh, and I can also vary how hard, or I can press on one side of it more than the other and make a graded line with it. So it's a way to do a lot of shading. Then we have what are called blending stumps. They'll come usually in a package like this where there's gonna be several of them in the package. And with the blending stump, 
I can come in on top of what I've put down there and I can soften and smooth it. And it frequently will give me a much prettier looking shading area. So when we get into shading, I'll talk more about these. And then erasers. Uh, I recommend these kneaded erasers. They come in a block and you can pull and knead on them to clean them up. Uh, to erase something soft like this, you actually press on this and lift rather than um, treating it more like a regular eraser. And so I can get quite a lot lifted with that, sometimes not 100%. This poor thing has been used a bunch, but this is a um, what they call dust-free, clean, soft erasing. Fiber Castell is one of the things. It's a, uh, it's actually a white er ah there. It is a white eraser underneath of there, uh, and these are soft erasers. I like using these rather than a harder eraser like the pink erasers we grew up with. So with this, I can come in here and I can erase quite a lot. I can erase some off of that. Get some of those extra lines off of there, so that that works better. Put that back in its little thing so I at least I have one clean part on there. Um, pencil sharpeners. Pencil sharpeners come in various different forms. Um, I'm getting to where I'm really liking these ones that have got two sizes and a container to hold the um, leavings in so that I don't make a big mess on my table. Um, you can also get them without the holder and they're just the erase uh, the pencil sharpener here. Uh, not all of our pencils are big where we need to have two hole sizes, but some of them are. And so it is nice to have the two hole sizes. And then, oh, one other thing, erasers. You can also get erasers that um, have a, here you can see the end of it there. It's like a little stick and it's narrow. So I can come in with this and erase in a small area. It's that same white soft eraser that I, the Fiber Castell, um, but these have uh, just a narrow tip on them. So they're very handy for getting small areas erased out. Uh, so I think that's most of what, oh, I know, white pencils. We might uh, work on some black paper. I think I had it on the list as something that you might want to consider buying. Um, and, and white pencils then work on that. Uh, I don't know, it's not going to show on there. We're going to have to actually go on some black paper for it to show. So uh, that, that was what I wanted to show you. So that's why we have the range of pencils so that when we get into doing shading, you'll be able to get the real dark areas put in. But for something like this where we're just doing the line work, use either an HB or a B. Uh, anything else is going to start smudging on you, uh, but this works really nice to get the line work in. Today is a drawing class day, and um, what I want to talk about is drawing animals. Uh, we'll start with some cats, and I think I left the, yeah, I left the dog pictures in here. Um, but what I want to talk about uh, is this whole notion that um, we, we have preconceived ideas in our mind of what something should look like. And it, when we are learning to draw, we have to learn how to set those preconceived notions aside and really draw what we're seeing. So, you know, like a cat, uh, the old thing of, you know, the picture, the kids all know how to draw this one. Uh, and there's two eyes and a little nose and a mouth and some whiskers. And then cat has body and some legs and a tail. And we all recognize that it's cat. Um, and there's certain things here that you do really identify it, the ears, the whiskers, the tail. Um, so when we're drawing an actual cat from a photograph or from real life, we have to force ourselves not to draw this image, but to draw what we're really seeing. And so one of the methods that I like to start with, there's various ways we can draw, and of course I'll, I'll show you various ones, but what I like to start with is what I call contour drawing. Now contour drawing comes in two forms, either what we call a blind contour or a not blind contour. A blind contour, we do not look at what we're drawing. We just look at the image. And so 
if I were to do this cat lane here with a blind contour, I would, I can start anywhere I want on it. And what I'm going to be doing is looking at the outside edge of this, uh, this object. We'll just call it an object because if we think of it as an object rather than a cat, then we can look at it and be a little more objective about it. So I'm going to start down here at the tail and I'm going to just look at this while I'm working and I'm not going to look at what my drawing is. It's going to be really hard to make me do that and maybe I even need to turn slightly so it's a little harder for me to see. So I'm going to start here at this tail and let's just make sure I've got space. Yeah, so I'm going to start at the end of that tail and It's, you don't realize that you actually can do this, that you can be putting this down on the page and know what direction your pencil is going. And I do it pretty slowly so that uh, I can work my way along. And I can just follow. So I'm working my way along through here and up through that back until I come to the neck. And then we're going to go up one of the ears come down and across the top of the head. I'm just doing the very outside edge, not coming into those ears. I could also come into the ears and work my way around through there, but for this contour, I'm not going to. Don't look, Margaret. It's, I just, I really want to look. And then I go down his chest, out one of the legs, and just go slowly looking at this, I go, tip of his paw, come back in here, find the second paw, and there's a little bit of a, a edge turn up at the edge of the paw, and then I'm going to come back. I, I have not picked up my, pay, my pencil off the page while I've done this. Uh, you don't want to pick up your pencil because if you do, it interrupts your thought process. And uh, so this is a real concentration, meditation kind of thing. So there's a little fuzzy bit on the bottom of his belly. Now I'm coming to his other leg at the back. And we turn and come out the foot. And I'm at the tip of the foot. Work back. There's a little break in between the two legs. Second leg comes out. Foot comes out. And I follow along follow slowly, slowly, top of his leg, turns in toward his bottom, comes up on that tail, and then we follow the tail. There's a little bit of fuzziness if I want to catch it, out to the tip of the tail. Now, as you can see, I, this didn't all line up exactly on top of it, but I really did capture the feel of that cat's head, and this is what these contour drawings allow us to do is really sort of capture the feeling of something. What I want you to do, um, and I will have sent you these four photographs of the cats and these four photographs of the dogs. And uh, so let's spend, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes and do several contour drawings, your choice of them. Um, start anywhere on them, but go back and finish at the same point. So these are blind contours. You do not look at your page while you're working. You just look very slowly and carefully at the object. Our next is a contour drawing where we look just a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use my next cat here for that. And with this, maybe I'll want to work on my way around his head just a little bit. So let me start at, hmm, where do I want to start? Let's start up at this ear. And 
So I'm going to start at this ear, and which way am I going to go? Right to left, left to right. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, and actually, I'm going to start at the lower part of that ear. So lower part of that ear. And now I'm going to occasionally look at what I'm doing. I'm coming back to that bottom and then coming back up, finding the top of his head here. And let's just find the top of his head, and I'll find the other ear and then work my way around his head. It gets a little fatter down here at the bottom. There's some whiskers that come off. Some whiskers that come off. And then we're going to find the bottom of that um, chin. And there's whiskers that come off of here as well. And then let's come out and find the edge of this. And now I'm going to leave my pencil on the page and leave my pencil on the page and just sort of work my way through the top of these ears. And now this comes down and there's a line that comes down into his eyes so we can get his eyes, come down and find this nose and across the nose and comes into here. And that probably should have actually been down there slightly further, come the other side of that, and wrap across this other eye. And then now I'm going to just sort of leave this here, not completely, but up to there. And then let's find the rest of his body. I need to move this a little bit. So then it comes and sweeps way down in here. There's some of it we don't see off of there. Let's just pretend like we do. It's fatter in here. And then this is going to come down and around his leg. And so I'm just occasionally glancing. I'm still not taking my pencil off the page, but I'm occasionally glancing so that I can get my proportions a little closer to being right. And then this leg comes down and sort of through those and we find the little foot there. This leg comes up and there's some leaves there and it's sort of hard to see. I think he was moving his other foot. There's a foot down in here somewhere, comes back up into there. And then I did peck I did pick that up partially because there's a foot right back here that I'm going to add to that. So it's still maybe not quite to proportion, but I'm getting the feel of the cat's face. I'm getting the feel of its body, and I've gotten the proportions maybe a little bit closer than what I did in the absolute blind contour. You're going to be surprised how much you can capture the feeling of something in these contour drawings. So once again, I want you to spend 10, 15 minutes, do several contour drawings from the different images. So, you know, either the cats or the dogs, uh, and go ahead and try that. Now, the third way that we can do this is what's called gesture drawing. And with gesture drawing, we want to um, be looking at sort of the, the flow of how a, um, an animal is and the basic shapes that are there. So like our gray cat here, we have a flow line that runs through his head and out through his tail. And it's sort of the way the body's standing. And so we have this and it runs through the tail. And then the body is sort of this triangular shaped piece in here, triangular shaped piece, and then we have a head which is somewhat round, and then we have some feet that come off down in here, this foot comes off through this, and then this tail comes out in this fuzzy, and then there's some ears that need to get put onto this that overlap and into that head a little bit. And then there's a line that almost comes out of those ears. Um, well, I, let's just say that this, this is more like a triangle in here that has the eyes in it, the eyes in it, and then it comes out to that nose, little tip of the nose, and we can add that little shape 
So we're going from big shapes to little shapes as we build this up. And then he's got a little fur here. And it's all just a little bit rough. I still haven't used a single eraser on this and I'm not going to on this today. I'm just gonna leave these a little on the rough side just because that's what these are. Uh, and then, yeah, that body line runs in through there. There's another little foot back in there. Okay, so that's a gesture. So now let's go for fourth. And once again, I want you to do two or three gesture drawings. Uh, don't spend more than five minutes on any one of them. Um, and then move to another. If they're not going well, just leave it and go on to another one and pretend like you uh, are starting fresh. And I'm just gonna put those eyeballs in there because that really adds a nice little touch. And I'm noticing that those eyes are actually round on the One other way of looking at this is to look at how what kind of basic shapes are here. And we did it a little bit with this one where we did the triangle and the circle for the head. But let's do that even a little bit further. And so maybe this little black cat sitting here on the lawn might be good for that. So what I'm seeing here is a rectangle for the body and then an oval for the head, and then these little sausages coming out for the feet, and this line that comes off this rectangle out into the tail. So rectangle for the body, and the rectangle is slightly smaller on this end than that end, so you know it's not a perfect rectangle, so basically like that. And then the head overlaps on this, starts from here, and is this oval. There's an oval in here, and then there's some straight pieces that come off for those legs. This leg comes down from that just a little bit. It's a little lower, so if you notice that that's a little lower on there, and that's there. Uh, let's see, the head has a little more shape right there. Once again, big shapes going to little shapes. This doesn't really have a big lump there. You can take that off a little bit and find its way out into the tail. So there's a tail. We can't, you can just barely see in this photograph that there's actually another foot here. And then what do the ears do? So this ear comes up and the second ear is hiding in on top of that right in there. And then lastly, the eye from this angle is a triangle. And there it is. So we have a cat. Pretty simple, not really detailed yet, but you know, sort of blocked in so that we can see that whole feeling of it. So go ahead and do another 10 minutes or so of this uh, we can repeat it as many times as needed. So this is as far as we're going to get with this drawing today. Um, our next lesson we'll start doing maybe some shading. I will be starting every time with doing a little contour drawing to get you going. Uh, we'll be playing with animals um, for at least part of this.